this is Jake with Reverb, here to talk to you guys today about doing some home recording on the bass. So whether you're a bassist, guitarist, or producer, these are some easy ways to get a good bass sound from home. No matter which method you end up using, the first thing you're going to need is an interface. So today we're using a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 going into a MacBook that's running GarageBand. Some other great options for interfaces include the Euphoria series by Behringer, Studio 2.6 by PreSonus, or the Apollo series by Universal Audio. Once you get your interface hooked up and your drivers installed, you're going to need some software to record with. All MacBooks come with GarageBand installed, so that's what we're going to be using. But some other great options include Logic Pro 10, Pro Tools, Ableton, Cubase, or FL Studio. So for this first method, we're just going to plug directly into the interface, the quarter inch cable going straight from the base. Something of note is that if we're going directly into the interface like this with no compression or preamp or EQ or anything, we need to be very aware of our gain level. We'll follow one simple rule for today. Red is bad. You want to avoid the red no matter what. So you see right now, we're maxing out a little. For the most part, you want to keep it in the green. You can go a little bit past, but especially when you're recording direct into an interface, you want to avoid the clipping because it's not going to sound good the way that it might with like a tube amp breaking up. So it's real simple. Let's just dial back our gain. Right now it's at noon. And we'll just crease it back a little bit. We got some room to play louder if we want. For the most part, we're right in the green. Now before we track something of note, is if you're playing along with drums or anything else and you notice a little bit of delay, you're going to need to check your latency settings and make sure that you get rid of that so that everything sounds the way it needs to. So you notice recording line in, the sound can be a little bit thin. So if you're looking for something to beef that up, you might want to invest in some plugins. Some great options include the Amplitube series by IK Multimedia, the 1176 collection by Universal Audio, or the CLA76 plugin by Waves. If you're looking for a more natural sound, or you really just love the sound of the amp that you've already got, you're probably going to want to mic it. So let's see how to do that. Right now we're running into an Ampeg B15. If you've got one of these, I highly recommend that this is what you record with. These amps are incredible. Right now we're just throwing a Beta 52 by Shure. It's kind of like an industry standard bass mic on the front. We're pointing it pretty much directly center of the cone, about five inches back. Now the Beta 52 is a passive microphone. It doesn't need to be powered, but some mics, especially nicer condenser mics that you get, are gonna need to be powered. So make sure if your interface has phantom power that you plug your mic in before turning the phantom power on and that you turn the phantom power off before you unplug that mic. Gain philosophy when micing an amp is pretty much the same thing. Just want to check and make sure we're not in the red. Feel free to experiment a little bit with the placement of the mic in regards to the speaker. If you move it a little bit off axis, you're gonna get a different sound. Basically anywhere you put it is gonna change the sound that it picks up. But one thing you might want to avoid is putting it directly up against the speaker, hugging the speaker. Because due to the proximity effect, you're just gonna get a lot of the bass frequency and you're not gonna get any of the mid or high frequencies. You're gonna lose a lot of clarity that you might otherwise have. Now we just grabbed a Beta 52 because it was on hand and it's kind of like the industry standard but there are a number of other mic choices that sound great. The D112 by AKG, the RE20 by Electro Voice, the M88 by Bayer Dynamic, or the MD421 by Sennheiser. Lastly, surprise, surprise, you've got the SM57. It's a great mic for drums, for guitar, for vocals, and it turns out it's wonderful on bass too. The last option for recording we're going to explore today is using a DI. We grab the radial JDI. Some of the immediate benefits of using a DI 
gives you the option of a ground lift, gives you a pad to help wrangle in some of your signal, and some of the fancier ones have tubes in the preamps that'll add some warmth and color to your direct sound. Super simple, the first way we're gonna use it, we're just gonna plug directly into the DI and we're gonna take the XLR signal out of this and run that through our interface. So if the sound coming directly from your DI is a little too clean or too thin for your liking, there are some options you can have to fatten it up. You can go back and explore some of the plugins we mentioned before. But if you're still looking to add a little bit of warmth but keeping some of that clarity, cleanness that you get from the DI, one of the best things you can do with a DI is split the signal so that you're actually getting the line from the DI and the mic sound from the amp. You're just gonna run your line signal from your bass through this input of the DI, take the XLR out from the back of the DI, that's gonna be going into channel one. Now we have this through option over here, and that's gonna be going from the DI into the bass amp. We're gonna be miking the amp now with a 57, and our channel two on the focus right is now gonna be the mic sound. So now that we've got everything set up, we're gonna to wanna to make two tracks, one for the DI and one for the mic, before you really get recording, you're gonna to wanna to check the phase relationship between the two. If it sounds a little thin, you might be out of phase. You're gonna to wanna to correct that. Phase correction has come a long way, so it's really easy to fix. There's usually a little switch, either on your interface or in your DAW, where you can do that. Personally, I love the sound of the DI plus the amp. It's how we do everything here when we shoot our bass videos. You really get the best of both worlds. You can mix the two to taste, whether you want a little bit more clarity from your DI or a little bit more of the warmth and color of your amp. Now the DI's come in a bunch of different shapes and sizes, from pedals that give you different effects as well, different EQ boosts and distortions and whatnot, to full-blown rack mount DI's that you might see in studios. The Battalion by Electroharmonics, the Telefunken TDA, the R&DI by Rupert Neve Design. Now some of the cream of the crop best bass DIs that you can buy are gonna be the U5 by Avalon or the Ready by A Designs. Now there's a whole wide world of literature and techniques that goes into bass recording. We just covered some of the most basic ones today. At the end of the day though, you really have to let your ears guide you to what sounds the best. Don't just set a mic based on what you've read. Make sure that you're checking it with your ears and being honest to what you really hear. If you're looking to learn a little bit more about the gear or some other recording tips and tricks, please check it out on Reverb. This is Jake, we'll see you next time.